Okay, so today we are going to use the Elegant Writer Pen to make a watercolor. Last time we used a Stabilo pencil with water to create a black and white watercolor. And this time we'll use the Stabilo pencil, the difference being Stabilo pencil, I'm sorry, the Elegant Writer is permanent once it bleeds and it doesn't reactivate. So where you wet it, it's permanent. And it'll, whereas a Stabilo pencil, you can reactivate every time you add water. So the bleeds are beautiful with the different colors. See, they're pink and blue. Sometimes they make purple. So I drew this floral in a little vase and then outlined it with this elegant writer. So there's the pen, the elegant writer. I'll put a link to how to where to find the pen at. So basically you're just gonna add some water. And here I am painting, I'm doing negative painting which is painting around a subject to bring out the light within the subject. So I'm just doing a value study here with darks, mid values, and lights. The lightest is the white of the paper, just like in a watercolor. So a little water goes a long way. So when you're first using this, just try where you think the shadows will be on your subject. And keep cleaning your brush so that you can activate the ink pen with clean water. I wanted um, some uh, darks in my vase, but not the whole thing dark, so I chose this little design. And my background is going to be sort of a mid-value. Except right underneath the flowers where the shadows are. You can also go back and make a line darker and activate it where you put the new line. So I wanted this a little darker. So wherever you need it darker, just go back again and um, draw a thicker line. So I like to move around when I'm working to keep myself interested and in deciding what plants are going to be light, what are going to be dark, I've decided these leaves are just going to, I'm going to keep them mostly light, a little shadow. And you kind of play as you go. I decided I want more contrast and more shadows in this flower. So I added more water in that one. I also like to move around just so I get an idea how the whole composition is going to look instead of fussing in one area too long. So back to that. I wasn't sure if, how much water to add. I paused here. I had to record over my original discussion with this painting. So yes, the light, the painting, the flowers that are yellow here, the Coreopsis on the right, 
I'm leaving mostly white. So I decided, except for the center and underneath, because I decided I wanted that high contrast. So with the really light flowers, the bigger one is a mid-value, just to have a variety of lights and darks. So as you see, I had to add more pen to get the more ink to flow on that background. And painting around that leaf uh, gave the leaf more interest. When you're working black, grays, and whites, you, you want to get enough highlights in there. More drama is created with more shadows. Now I did notice um, when this dried, what I did right there, I should have probably not made it as dark because it did get uh, too dark as it dried. So that's the thing, you're just gonna live and learn. You're gonna learn as you go, but it's really fun to work this way. I had a good time doing this. Um, I've also done portraiture this way. Sometimes the, it takes a while, but when you'll come back when it's dry and there'll be pinks and purples and blues that come out of the ink. It's really interesting. They're not there yet in this, at this point. And um, I just wanted a little more interest in my background. So I'm playing around with some colors on the lines. And I'll do that on the other side later, but I didn't do it in the video. And I want the darkest area right coming out of the shadows in the center. So I was going back to add a little more darkness so that it'll bleed out again. So um, a 140 pound watercolor paper um, is good to start with or a watercolor bamboo paper. I, I just buy um, a Canson pad. It's affordable and you can play around without worrying about how you, that you're gonna waste the paper. I save my really good watercolor paper for um, when I know I'm going to do a painting to frame. But these are just playful studies and techniques here. So play around on some uh, paper that's portable before you, until you know what you're doing.
And even then, I just like to do studies with this. I'm really not that, um, uh, let's see, not that experienced with it so far. This is, I've only been using this pen a little while, but I have been painting a long time. So when you draw your composition, I just played around. I don't know what these flowers are. I just made them up based on something I've seen. I just you want a variety of sizes and shapes in your flowers to play with. Okay, so here is where I made the mis mistake now that I'm looking at it dry. Just that, that part right there, it looks really good when it's wet, right, when I do this. But when it dried, it was really black. So... You just don't know until it's dry what's going to happen. Let me learn. I love the illustrative quality of this um, ink bleeding. It's an unusual look compared to watercolor. You can do this with just a um, black watercolor and make grays and washes out of it. But um, what I like is when the this pen dries, it's permanent. You're not going to be able to reactivate the colors. Unlike watercolor, you can reactivate it when you wet it. The only time it will reactivate is if you accidentally did not wet part of the ink. If there's a place where the ink has not been wet yet, um, that can be that can still be activated with water. So this is about it. This is a fun little technique. Uh, if you want to drop some watercolor in with the ink, you can do that. Give it a try. But I would stick with just trying the pen first by itself and have fun with it. And that's it.